Hey folks, Matt from Weight Health Synergy. I just made up a fresh pot of chicken broth, chicken stock, um, and uh, we'll show that to you in another video, but this is the canning video or the jarring video. This is where I'm taking the stock and I'm putting it into mason jars and we're sealing it. And then once it cools, I will actually throw it in the freezer because with chicken stock or chicken broth, always great to have in the freezer, homemade, whole, chicken broth, chicken stock that is healthy and you can just pull it out of the freezer whenever you want to make another recipe with, to make some chicken soup with if you're not feeling well. Lots and lots of uses. You should always have some good stock, some good broth around. So without further ado, here is the stock pot and um, I made this up yesterday and um, then it cooked, it simmered for, uh, what was it, uh, 24 hours. And it was a whole chicken, all chopped up, a um, bunch of celery. What did I put in there? Four or five stalks of celery. Put in uh, three or four medium onions, a couple tablespoons of vinegar. We cooked it all down. We brought it to a boil, reduced it to like a simmer heat, and then we just let it slow cook for 24 hours. And now we have a lovely, beautiful looking stock here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my strainer ladle and I am going to take out the meat and the carcass because we just I want the stock strained that's normally what you do with stock or broth you strain it out um, you can leave it in but then you've got basically chicken soup if you don't want to use it for another purpose but we're not going to throw it out we're going to strain it out and complete with the vegetables and everything so I'm going to strain that out it takes a minute just because you want to make sure you get all your all your broth out and then um, we want to keep the bowl up close to the side here and we are going to strain out the entire stock pot. So this is all our meat and from the chicken because this was a, a complete chicken. Um, it was no head, no neck um, and I think the intestines had been removed. But um, basically other than that it is a full chicken. So there's a lot of good meat on here and what we'll do is we will save all of this um, the bones and whatnot, um, and a lot of the carcass will be saved for another um, bunch of broth because you can make a second batch of broth from uh, the same bones. They're good for uh, two batches. Some people will even go three, um, and then um, you're getting good use because you're still getting um, all of the good minerals and the um, natural gelatin and things like that out of the bones, which makes broth so tasty and so healthy so we're just putting this uh, all together here if you want a really good book on how to make good broths and stocks I suggest you check out Sally Fallon's nourishing broths uh, I forget who the co-writer is I'll put the link below for you fantastic book with lots of good broths in it there so very very good that way and uh, so I'm just ladling this out. I'm beginning to think maybe what I should have done is poured it into another bowl through the strainer to clarify it. And I think what I'll do is I'll scoop out as much as I can here. This is my first chicken broth. I've been doing uh, beef bones and beef broth, which is delicious. And I've been eating a lot of that. It's very good. Great stuff to have on a low-carb keto diet because you can just take this broth throw in some vegetables with my with my beef broth I've been throwing in some beet greens out of the um, garden and then I put in a little butter as it's being reheated from the fridge and then I garnish it off with some sour cream and then we are good to go for um, for uh, a beautiful nourishing soup very filling it's very good it's a good keto meal be right back okay so i got myself a large pyrex bowl what i'm going to do is i'm going to move this one over here for now so that's where our chicken parts are and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to try using my strainer as um this might be a little there's probably a better way to do this than what i'm doing at the moment but um i'm going to want to try and strain out the um all of the, uh, I'm seeing this is probably gonna make a mess, so if I do it that way. 
I was gonna, I need to get something that's a strainer that goes over this bowl that I can just pour the pot through. That would be the easiest way. I don't know if they make something like that, but at the moment, I think I'm gonna stick with what we were doing first off, and that was just straining out the, um, the broth into this because I don't wanna make a great big mess and end up dumping a lot of my stuff everywhere. So we'll just tilt the pot. It's a little bit of a slower process, but you know what? It smells delicious. So not, it's not, uh, not, a, not a problem. I guess, you know, you could probably use cheesecloth or something like that to, uh, to do this, to, to scoop out the, the meat and everything and clarify it that way. But, and then there are some people, I shouldn't say clarify, because um, I believe what you do if you want like clarified, like totally clear broth, is that you um, put in, I think you can cook an egg in it. Don't, uh, don't take my word on that without looking it up, but that's if memory serves what you can do to kind of clarify your broth. Is to uh, is to cook an egg in it. So now what we might be able to do here, I've got most of it out of here. So now what I'm thinking is that I'm going to move the chicken aside and uh, take a picture here, and we'll show you a close up of what the chicken looks like. So that's our chicken with um, the chicken and everything that was strained out of there. That's complete. The meat, the bones, the carcass, <clears throat> everything. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to try. If we can use, yeah, that might work nicely. I'm gonna need to support that somehow though, which is gonna be a bit of an issue. Okay, so I had another brainwave. What I'm gonna try this time is I'm gonna use a one and a half cup, well, it's a one cup, but they work out to almost two when you pass the measuring size. But I can hold the ladle over top of here and this is what we're gonna try doing for straining our stock. And I'll see if I can figure out an even more ingenious method for the next time I do this, but I'm gonna scoop it out here I'm just going to pour it through this way. And this way, we should have nothing but nothing but stock. I'm going to switch hands here. I've got these backwards because I want to hold the ladle off to the side. In case it drips, we want to go back into the pot. So as you can see, this is the first time I have strained stock because I'm just figuring it out as we go, which is always fun. I have to tell you, it smells delicious. So I'm uh, really looking forward to having some of this for the first time, because I've been really enjoying the beef stock. I'm gonna just tilt this a bit and see if we can get some of the, I don't care if it's perfectly clarified, I just want most of the chicken parts and whatnot out. So we'll bring our chicken part bowl back over here. We'll put more of that there. There's gonna be some broth still in the strained chicken carcass and whatnot because it's just gonna happen that way that it's very hard to get it fully strained out. I don't know if I'm gonna further try to strain it more or not because probably, probably not, we will see. This is looking good though, this is exciting. Look at that lovely chicken broth draining out there into the mason jar and I think this one's uh, this one's just about full. We're going to have to switch jars in a minute. So that'll be our first jar. Now, when I cooked the chicken down, I guess I didn't mention, I added four quarts of water. That's what the recipe I was kind of following and kind of, I followed a bit of a recipe and a bit of just looked at a whole whack of them and then just came up with my own because it's very basic. I mean, you could cook it down just with the chicken and water if you wanted to, but you want the flavor, um, I would think, I do anyways, from uh, celery and from the onions. So it looks to me... Like we're just about where we want to be for levels on this one here. Because I don't want it any higher than uh, up at the collar of the uh, of the jar. So that's our first one done. So I'm just going to move this one out of the uh, funnel out for a minute. Take a metal snap cap sealing lid. You want a metal ring for that. I'm going to screw that on nice and tight. Ooh, that is hot which is good because I think what's going to happen is I think the heat from the, the hot soup, because I, I reheated it again, it's been in the fridge uh, overnight from the last, from when it was cooked, um, just so it would all go liquid and not be congealed to can it. Um, but that should make the, the top pop, I think, when it cools. And then once it's cooled, then it will further go into um, the uh, freezer. 
to think about that for a minute. Um, and of course, if you're going to use it fairly, fairly soon, you don't have to freeze it. You could put it in the fridge. Let's go to our second one. It'd be interesting to see how many we get out of this. This was a full chicken. Um, no frills, which is one of my favorite stores here in Ontario, had chickens on sale this week. So I got a whole chicken, not a large one. It was a fairly small to medium sized chicken, but it cost me five bucks. You can't beat five bucks for a whole chicken. Um, and when you're making broth, it's good to have the entire chicken. You can do it with, uh, you know, the thighs and the, and the legs and, and things like that. Wings and whatnot, meaty and fleshy parts. You want to have the skin in there. You want to have a lot of the um, cartilage and things like that because that's where you're getting a lot of your goodness from the chicken that goes into your broth. Um, you know, there is uh, a lot of truth into in the old, you know, wives' tale or old tradition of if you're sick to have some chicken soup. And they weren't talking about chicken soup from um, a can or chicken soup from um, a box, like Lipton cup of noodles or whatever they call it. They're talking about this kind of soup, old, traditional, hearty chicken soup or chicken broth, chicken soup made from real broth, made from a real chicken, where you get all the goodness out of the bones and everything. And uh, people today... A lot of people have never even had real chicken soup like grandma or great grandma nowadays, I guess, would have made um, because not a lot of people um, do this. More and more people should. Used to be a tradition that uh, in a household, used to be the way it was that, uh, you know, the family, there was always uh, mom or grandma or whoever always had uh, stock or broth on the back of the stove. And if you're old enough, you probably remember that. If you're not, well, you learn something. So, um, and the reason for that is, is you could do a million things with it. You could make a quick chicken noodle soup. You could use it, some stock in a lot of other recipes, casseroles, things like that call for it. Um, if somebody's sick, um, best thing to do is go out and get some chicken and make yourself a, um, a chicken soup. Use it the old traditional method this way where you're making um, the broth and the stock. And then you can turn that into some soup. You can uh, make it chicken noodle if you so desire. If you're low carbonate, if you're keto dieting like I am, then you don't want the noodles in there, but you can certainly fill it up with other uh, non-starchy, non-carby vegetables, such as more celery, and um, you could even, if you want, you could make it into a chicken vegetable soup. So you could, uh, tomatoes are okay, zucchini, lots of stuff you can put in. I don't know if we're going to get two full quarts, because right now we are pretty much full on this one now. And I'm just looking at what's left in the pot. I'm not sure we have a full quart or liter left. I should say liter. These are liter jars. Quart if you're in the States. Liters if you're in most of the rest of the world. So there is the second one, number two. We'll pop on our snap lid there. And then we will put on the retaining ring, nice and tight. Put that over here to cool on the counter. And then we're going for number three. Now bear in mind, I did say I put four cups, or if not four cups, four quarts or four liters of water into here, four liters. Um, but as that cooked down over 24 hours, you are going to lose some to evaporation and whatnot. So um, that uh, has to be taken into account while you're thinking, well, why isn't he getting four uh, liters or four quarts back out? And you see what I just did? My, my bad, I'm not paying attention here. I took that and dumped it straight in. No big deal. We will stick that back on there, put this back on, and there we go. Keep our straining going. I am going to look into, I mean, this is not a big deal. It just takes a little bit of time, and good cooking takes some time. But I'm going to look into or try to figure out another method whereby I could strain the entire pot more quickly, um, and we'll see how that works. I could see that this is going to make a nice second pot of of, uh, of soup. So we'll uh, actually maybe we'll proceed to do that um, again in another video soon because I'm going to freeze that because I need to get some more celery. And I've got onions, but I don't have um, celery. Uh, I like to put in celery. Celery really is nice, especially with chicken. Chicken and onions. Uh, chicken and onions. Celery and onions makes it for a really nice chicken broth. Really enjoy that. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have to tilt this a bit to get a full 
full scoop of broth because we're getting it close to the end here. It'll be interesting to see how far up. How, how much of this uh, one liter mason jar we fill up with the remainder? I'm wondering how close we'll get to having three uh, liters of broth. Probably pretty close from the looks of it, but uh, we will see in a minute. Sorry about that, we just had a knock at the door. Somebody wanted to sell me some paving services. Apparently thinks my driveway needs to be repaved. Which it probably does, but I don't want to spend the money right now. <laughs> I would rather spend the money and my time on making some good, healthy, nourishing chicken stock and chicken broth so that uh, I'm continuing with my weight loss on my low carb keto diet and um, just feeling better and better every day instead of worrying about my driveway, which I can repave anytime. It's not that bad. Anyways, so we're almost out of stock here. In the, in the pot, I should say, for filling this. So we'll just see how much more we get. You know, almost if I had this the strainer, on the, the bowl part on this ladle, and not the handle, I could have left it sitting there. And I could have poured it straight in. I'm sure the cooking store has some type of gadget to do this, but I'm just making do with what I have, and I happen to have this strainer here, which is a lovely strainer. I believe my wife gave that to me for a birthday present. And I'm going to take the pot, and I'm going to pour the rest of it into my measuring cup, because we're that far down in the... Uh, there we go. So we got another... We might have just about three liters here, because we got about another cup anyways coming through here. You see it's kind of slow straining and the reason for that is because uh, there's a lot of stuff like when you simmer down a broth or a stock like this for 24 hours uh, a lot of stuff gets cooked right down so you get a lot of fine uh, meat and stuff from the bones and the carcass and whatnot. Um, all very healthy stuff, but it cooks right down, and that's what makes for that really good tasting, really nourishing broth. Kind of broth, you know, actually that you get in, like this type of thing is still done, and it's it's actually coming back, a resurgence of, so, of sorts, in like high-end restaurants. You want to get, you know, high-end restaurant will serve you some good soup and some good broth. Um, like when they make something, those chefs are not using something out of a can or whatever. They're cooking their own broth like this. Um, and they may have one of their assistants handling the broth and then further using it for whatever they're cooking it for or using it for. Okay, so that is the rest of our broth. Just scooping out the rest of that and I can do that in a bit. And here's some some of the rest of the chicken that was in here. Okay, so that's what we got. Let me get a spoon out of here because get one of our fancy lady spoons if you want to call it that. There is a fair bit of broth still in the uh, meat here, so I'm just going to see if I can top up this one with that. because we don't need to freeze all that broth in with the uh, with the chicken. So that one's right up there. Okay. So, there you go. We got uh, three good size um, portions of... Uh, let me get a paper towel here. Three good size li one liter mason jars. Uh, full. So they're not, uh, you know, half full or anything. And we still have uh, some some uh, stock, some liquid still left in there. Um, 
but it looks pretty good. That's it right there. You can see it there. We'll take a shot and we'll flip over to that so that you can see the three of them here. I'll line them up on the counter. And that's our chicken stock fully canned. That's uh, three one liter jars, pretty full one liter jars we got uh, from our chicken stock. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned. Uh, we will be doing another video where we show you from the beginning how we uh, chop up the chicken, what we put in, the vegetables, and how we make the stock. Um, this obviously being more the tail end of making it, but um, we will be back with uh, the beginning at another date the next time we make chicken stock. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon with more great recipes and videos here at weighthealthsynergy.com. Thanks.